video a supplement that flushes out excess potassium, an antioxidant that cuts your creatinine in half, and a simple trick to stop suffering from diabetes once and for all. Catherine here, I'm a doctor in natural medicine and a researcher in the field of kidney health. What I have for you today are 10 kidney saving tips, 10 incredibly small changes that will produce the biggest results in terms of lowered creatinine levels and they are all going to be effective but the number one is going to be incredible. Imagine tip number one as the low-hanging fruit of kidney health. A tip so simple yet so effective that missing it would be like having a winning lottery ticket and tearing it apart. So yeah, today I want to focus on some super easy tips that will drastically improve your kidney health. And let's start immediately. Let's see what's the easiest way to solve the potassium problem number 10 take vitamin d and coq10 to lower potassium levels many ckd patients are still struggling with high serum potassium and this is a problem having to avoid foods such as bananas avocados and spinach is not just bad for your quality of life it's also bad for your kidneys in fact, many potassium-rich foods are super healthy and they have strong kidney-protecting benefits. A diet rich in all fruit and vegetables is known to be the key not just to stop CKD but even to improve your renal function, says science. So what to do in order to bring avocados and bananas back on the menu? Well, you could try vitamin D supplements with CoQ10. Both vitamin D and CoQ10 are known to have, well, a multitude of health benefits. But in particular, they are also known to be some of the most effective blood pressure lowering supplements on earth. If you would start taking both these supplements, lowering your blood pressure by up to 20% will be a possibility. But how is this going to bring bananas back on the menu? Well, because high serum potassium levels are not caused by your diet. They are caused by your medications, especially blood pressure medications such as ARBs and ACE inhibitors. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, using these supplements will give your doctor the possibility to reduce your dose for ARBs and ACE inhibitors, solving the potassium problem completely. Time to start eating healthy again! And guys, if you think this info is useful, don't forget to give this video a like and maybe to share it with a friend. Super easy tip number 9. Add more fiber to slow down CKD progression. Not many people know this, but the amount of fiber you eat every day is directly correlated to your kidney function. The more the fiber, the more the kidney function. It's as simple as that. And since we just saw how to be able to eat high potassium foods again, adding more fiber shouldn't be that hard anymore. Make sure you are starting each and every meal with a fiber-rich food. Eat apples and pears with the peel. Turn rolled oats into your breakfast staple number one. Freeze your favorite fruits such as berries, bananas, grapes and snack on them when you're hungry. Switch to a lunch of greens and beans. Yes, improving your kidney function also means focusing on fiber. And of course, you can also add the supplement of acacia fiber that I always recommend. But keep in mind that supplements are not a replacement for a healthy diet. Okay, next tip, number eight, forget about oxalate. Okay guys, a lot of people are worried about oxalate these days because they say eating foods rich in oxalates will cause kidney stones and damage your kidneys. This means that some people will avoid extremely healthy foods such as spinach, 
rhubarb, beets, legumes, nuts, and more. But when they do this, they will have very hard times improving their kidney function, unfortunately. Hey, but at least they are not going to have kidney stones, right? Right? No, they will still have kidney stones if they have certain risk factors. Even if they avoid oxalate-rich foods. Wait, wait, wait. What? Yes, this is what recent research found out. We know today that it's not the food you eat, the primary source of urinary excretion of oxalate. It's your own body. So think about this for a moment. Even if you are religiously avoiding spinach and rhubarb, you may still have kidney stones and kidney damage because your body makes more oxalate than your food anyway. So does that mean that anyone with risk factors for kidney stones is doomed? Well, no, it doesn't. Luckily, for anyone suffering from this painful condition, there is a solution that doesn't involve avoiding foods that are super healthy. It's calcium carbonate. Do you remember what they say about oxalate? That oxalate is an anti-nutrient because it binds to other nutrients? Well, you can use this property to make oxalate completely innocuous. Just take between 800 to 2000 mg a day of calcium carbonate before the main meals to hack your risk for oxalate stones. In short, take between 800 and 2000 mg a day of calcium carbonate during the main meals and forget about oxalate. Okay guys, let's take a look at yet another simple tip to get rid of a very annoying issue. Number 7. Take magnesium and vitamin B6 and say goodbye to swelling. Swelling is a common issue for people with CKD. If your legs or your feet start to look larger than it was supposed to be, well, that's probably excess fluid that's being trapped inside. Now, there are prescription diuretics that help with swelling, but they also have side effects. What about something more natural then? Here is a recommendation for fighting swelling that only a naturopath can give you. One thing that helps with swelling and that's absolutely side effects free is taking magnesium and vitamin B6 together. If you do this, the direct effect is going to be an increase in urine production. And this is exactly what we want in order to fight swelling. So if you have kidney disease, get prescribed a renal multivitamin containing vitamin B6 and take it with 300 or 400 milligrams of magnesium oxide. And remember, you also want to drink lots of fluids in order to get rid of excess fluids. Up next, number six, a super easy tip. Eat a banana before bed to sleep better. Bananas are great and guess what? The ban on high potassium foods has been lifted. So it's time for everyone to start enjoying them once more. And yes, bananas are super healthy. What not many people know is that you can make these delicious fruits even healthier by having one before bedtime. Now, why would you want to snack on a banana right before going to bed, you may ask? Well, because bananas are not just bursting with antioxidants and phytonutrients. Bananas are among the select few fruits that contain a decent amount of the nerve messenger serotonin. Yeah, that's why many people love eating bananas so much. It's not the potassium, it's the serotonin. And you know what? Our body converts some serotonin into melatonin, the sleep hormone. So consider eating a banana before bed. Also because sleeping better is proven to help protect the kidney, says science. Okay, up next, let's take a look at an easy way to make some of the most harmful prescriptions you may be taking a lot less harmful. Number five, supplement folic acid if you are taking an ARB or an ACE inhibitor. We know today that taking these medications, ARBs and ACE inhibitors, is linked to kidney damage and faster progression to kidney failure. But those are medicines that are still being prescribed to everyone today and there is no sign of this changing anytime soon. And if that wasn't bad enough, we also know that taking ARBs and ACE inhibitors will mess with several vitamin and mineral levels. 
Potassium is one, but these medications can also deplete certain vitamins. So if your goal is to keep your kidneys as healthy as possible, for as long as possible, always supplement vitamin B9 or folate when taking an ARB or an ACE inhibitor. A very large study was in fact able to link a 44% lower decline in renal function to supplementing 0.8 mg a day of folate when taking one of these medications. Folate plays a key role in breaking down homocysteine, an amino acid that can exert harmful effects in the body. Homocysteine is linked to increased risk of cardiovascular disease, end-stage renal disease and death. So yeah, Take 0.8 mg a day of vitamin B9 or folate. Fun fact, while 0.8 mg a day is a pretty high dose for folate, today most renal multivitamins contain exactly 0.8 mg of folate. Yep, they also have read the study I've just shown you. In short, make sure you are getting enough vitamins of the B group, especially if you are taking a blood pressure medication or if your homocysteine levels are too high. Number 4. Let's see how to protect yourself from dangerous medical exams and to cut your creatinine in half with just one antioxidant, which is probably the single most powerful antioxidant out there. Our number 4 for today is and acetylcysteine sustain or NAC in short. And you see, NAC is incredibly powerful, but it also comes with some side effects. So make sure you watch the next part of this video before you take it. Many people today are worried about certain medical exams that could put their kidney in danger. And I'm talking about exams such as x-rays, CD scans and MRIs. But are these exams actually dangerous? And can you do anything to protect yourself from them? Well, they are, but not for the reason many people think. In fact, you may have heard that the radiations these exams use can damage your kidneys, but that's not true. Don't worry about radiations. The only way in which imaging exams can damage your kidneys is due to the contrast dye that sometimes used in these exams. So radiations are safe, but the contrast dye is not if you have kidney disease. It's actually a serious risk. I've seen patients in stage 3 being pushed in stage 5 by the contrast dye used in a single CT scan. Not nice. That's something called contrast induced acute kidney injury. It's a type of damage done by oxidative stress. And you know what can be used to mitigate this damage? Yes, NAC. And while avoiding these exams may be the best strategy here, that's not always possible. This is why it's also good to have an alternative. Now, NAC is one of the most powerful antioxidants on earth with incredible kidney protecting benefits. If you take NAC in the right dose, it can be effective used long term to prevent oxidative damage to the kidneys. Yes, this kind of damage doesn't only happen in imaging exams. And NAC is actually so good at protecting your kidneys from this damage that it was actually used to lower creatinine by 50% in a study. Commonly used doses are 600 to 1800 milligrams of NAC per day. NAC is more effective when consumed on an empty stomach. And keep in mind that NAC could interact with blood pressure medications by making them more potent and with anticoagulants. Up next, the easy trick to boost your kidney function. And now we are in the top three, so the next entries are going to have some very powerful effects on your health and well-being. Number three, take calcium carbonate to save your kidneys from phosphorus. Already talked about calcium carbonate in relation to oxalate, but this supplement has another superpower. Calcium carbonate also binds to the phosphorus in the foods you eat. The phosphorus is then removed through the bowel, effectively stopping your body from taking extra phosphorus in. This is extremely helpful. In fact, when phosphorus accumulates, which is common in CKD, the body will put out calcium from the bones. Phosphorus is the reason why we don't eat meat, dairy, and fish. Phosphorus is also the main cause for uremic pruritus. It also well, it makes kidney disease progress faster and it comes with a higher chance of death. And this is just one more reason to take between 800 and 2000 milligrams a day of calcium carbonate before the main meals. 
Okay, up next, our number two. If your goal is to beat diabetes, consider doing intermittent fasting. But why intermittent fasting, you may ask? Well, because it was believed for a long time that type 2 diabetes patients who suffered from diabetes for six years or more were never going to be able to go into remission. We were convinced that six years was some sort of point of no return for diabetes, all right? If you had it for more than that, you were going to have diabetes for life. No remission was possible. But then, a study was made and researchers were able to prove that even patients who had type 2 diabetes for 11 years could go into remission and in just 3 months. But how were they able to achieve this incredible result? Yeah, you guess it! With intermittent fasting! Okay, now at this point, people usually storm to the comment section to tell me, hey, I've been skipping breakfast for two years now and I still have diabetes. Are you sure this actually works? Well, you see, intermittent fasting is absolutely not the same as skipping breakfast. It's a tool. It's a way to reduce your caloric intake. Because here's the thing, just skipping meals without reducing your caloric intake is not good for your health doesn't make you lose weight, doesn't help with diabetes. What to do then? Well, that's why you should use intermittent fasting as a tool. When you are skipping a meal, you also need to make sure that you are not eating anything more than what you usually eat during the other meals of the day, right? That's how you achieve a caloric restriction. That's how you beat diabetes. Actually, the way they achieve a caloric restriction in this study was by giving all the participants pre-made meals for the whole three months duration of the study. The meals were in the form of rice, biscuits, and solid beverages, and they were also completely plant-based. They were eating lots of rice, potatoes, whole grains, fruits, even some added sugar. And this may seem counterintuitive, but the only thing that really matters in beating diabetes is the Caloric restriction, says science. In short, if your goal is sending diabetes into remission, consider an intermittent fasting diet that's also low in calories. Wow, that was a great tip. It's going to be hard to find a number one that's even better. But what if I tell you that our number one is going to be an easy way to actually cut your proteinuria in half? Let's take a look. Number one, take these two supplements together to cut your proteinuria in half, according to studies. These two supplements can actually repair the microvessel damage inside the kidney that causes proteinuria, but only if you take them together. Proteinuria, also known as albuminuria, is a key marker for kidney health. It actually predicts if you are going to get a better or worse kidney function at your next scheduled checkup. It's incredibly important to make sure this level is always under control. And in my experience, there is a combination of supplements that can give you very significant results in terms of improved proteinuria levels. So first thing you want here is astragalus. This is a root that has been used for centuries to help with kidney issues. Today we know that it, well, it actually works, especially on proteinuria. But don't take it alone. Always add turmeric to astragalus. When taken together, these two supplements have the ability to repair the microvessels inside the organs in your body. And as we can see, this combination is going to be extremely powerful, not just for proteinuria, but for diabetes as well. Astragalus and turmeric are also able to reduce the beta cell damage. Beta cells are the cells inside your pancreas, the cells that actually make insulin. And guys, I've shared with you all the info you need about this natural treatment in my recent video up here and also down in the description if you missed it. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye!